Um, the, this was a very special moment. This when we arrived in Nepal. This wasn't when we arrived in Nepal, sorry, but when we arrived in Nepal, it was just so good to be there. Um, the country just is so special, and it, it means so much that, you know, at this stage when I arrived into Nepal, it, it wasn't about the summit for me. And to be honest, a long time before that, I realized it wasn't about the summit for me. And it's very hard to do because everybody's fixated, and I wouldn't be up here talking if I had summit. I wouldn't be invited. So, uh, so, so it's very significant to summit, and it's very significant for everybody that's around you. But like to me, deep down, it wasn't about the summiting. It was about giving it my very best shot. And I met at the Nepal Art event, I met Noel Hanna here, an incredibly experienced Irish mountaineer, multiple members summits. Um, and he said to me, look, he, he really, he was really powerful in the way he described it. He said, enjoy the journey, enjoy every moment, he said. Because he said, things might not always go right. Who knows how, how successful you'll be. He said, and don't come back with regrets. And that really struck a chord with me. And uh, I was really conscious and really, you know, uh, making a big effort to enjoy every bit of it. And when I did that, I enjoyed it every moment of it. And it, that doesn't mean it was easy. You know, there was lots and lots of hard parts, really hard parts. But I enjoyed it because that's what I decided and what I wanted to do. So on the trekking, we arrived into Kathmandu, which is an amazing city, uh, full of hustle and bustle. Um, didn't get to enjoy it too much, but, you know, flipping forward, flipping a few months ahead, when we got back down, we had great fun there celebrating our summits. And it was an incredible city. Hustle, bustle, so felt so safe, enjoyed wonderful food, wonderful hospitality. We hit nightclubs, bars, everything, and it was just great fun from start to finish. But um, away from the nightclubs and back to something a bit more spiritual here. Uh, so this was Lamageshi, and this was an important moment for the Sherpas. And uh, Lamageshi, they, they think really highly of Lamageshi, and this was the blessing with Lamageshi. So he put a prayer card on me that, of course, I still wear. Um, and it was a blessing ceremony that basically gave us permission or, or, the, or the, the look of the gods on our side to, to climb Mount Everest. Uh, we had one other uh, ceremony before we got onto Everest, and that was the Pudja ceremony at base camp. But this was the first part, Lama Geshe. They felt that Lama Geshe would, would bring us a lot of safety. And what was really special about these was that these powerful Sherpas who, like Ming, Ming who's climbed 19 times, and Pasang, who was with us at this stage, 11 ever summits. Um, for him, the, these moments were really, really moving. And when you feel that, and when you're in the room with that, they become so spiritual to you. And, um, and of course, we, um, we're all we're different religions, naturally, without saying the obvious, but, but it becomes spiritual in a different way. And, um, and, and it was very, very important, very special. And all the way along base camp, you had those moments uh, when you were leaving huts, when you'd get the prayer scarves, and um, when you past temples, and we'd stop for moments of reflection and things like that. And that's what, what is really special about the trip, I suppose. The most special part is getting into base camp. We were about nine days trekking into base camp. And uh, when we arrived at base camp, I think I'll the next slide. Uh, when we arrived at base camp, this was, our, this was our setup here. So we had all our nationalities. I was with a group of eight. There were seven of us by the time we got to base camp. One person, a uh, Brazilian guy. Um, he got really sick on an acclimatizing peak. He took a sleeping tablet at 6,000 meters when he was struggling to acclimatize. So it was just a, it was just a, a mistake he made. He obviously wasn't thinking straight, but um, they were on island peak. I acclimatized on the boot tape, but we came into base camp at the same time. But they were on island peak, and he took a sleeping tablet. They were sleeping high just below the summit. It's about, just over 6,100 meters island peak. And he took a sleeping tablet, and anyway, his, his body started to close down. But again, in, in the hands of the Sherpas, um, they got him off the mountain onto helicopter and two weeks later in a hospital in Kathmandu, he was right as rain after that. But um, we arrived into base camp and this gives you a feel for what conditions were like, like at base camp. First of all, we were overlooking the Kumbu Valley. Is that this way? I think I should know the way up. <laughs> we don't just get lost in car too. <laughs> this way. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So up to the right here, sorry, it's the angle of the photograph that's drawing me off. Yeah, so obviously our camp was here, so we were looking up, that's what's drawing me off. But, uh, so this was our base camp, and base camp is an incredible place. There's people just from all over the world, expeditions, um, there were military, there were a couple of military teams, there was a Gurkha team there, um, the British, uh, the Nepalese end of the British Army, if that's the right way to describe it. There was a Pakistani Navy group there. There were just people from all over the world. So as you can see, we we multicultural trip as well. Brazilians, Mexicans, Norwegians, Icelandics, um, Irish, myself, 
and Norwegians at Dimensional. So we had a real mix and we all, at base camp we all had an individual tent. Um, these are our mess tents actually, so these were our, our tents here. So we had an individual tent at base camp, which was really comfortable. Now, if you're sleeping on the glaciers, you're sleeping on ice, so the tent can change a bit as the, as the ice melts underneath you. But, um, but we're really happy to arrive into base camp. And base camp really felt like home. It felt like, felt like a safe place and it felt like a comfortable place where you were really well catered for. Um, here the Sherpas would prepare all your meals. As I said, these were our food tents, communications tent. And um, they prepare like, really varied food and lots of it. Um, and the key there was to consume as much food as you possibly could. Whenever you're at base camp, you're generally trying to recover, trying to build up your strength. The trek was nine days, but we did an acclimatizing peak. I did the Buja, which is just over 6,000 meters on the way. And so by the time you get there, you're actually, you're fairly tired. So we spent a few days just recovering, eating loads of food. So typical kind of food we get would be pasta, um, and potatoes, lots of potatoes. Um, but then it'd be kind of partnered with different foods. So as long as you get chicken, which they held, they stored in the ice until it was ready, until they were ready to, to prepare it. So it might be there for a week in the ice. Um, other times might have spam when the fresh chicken ran out, so they make spam burgers with a bit of cheese in between. Um, you'd have a little bit of tin fruit at night, and uh, but loads of snacks, endless amount of Pringles and nuts. You had, like, I, I must have brought about 20 kg of just chocolate and things like that. So the key of base camp was just eat as much as you could. So you were trying to get in maybe four, 4,000 calories a day if you could. Um, but it was really, really comfortable. But of course the daunting part was that you were overlooking the Cumber Ice Bowl. And the Kumbu Ice Fall is, um, is, is the most dangerous part of the mountain. I've never passed forward this time. I'm doing it too long and I'm all the time. So I'll flick a little bit through the rest of my expedition because the guys that cover off, off a, lot of, uh, a lot of Everest. But uh, this is a moment of the Kumbu Ice Fall. And this is the ladder across the crevasses. And I think there was maybe 30 ladders or more we had to cross this year. And they were roped together like this one is roped together. So that's just rope tying them together. And they were just typical aluminium ladders. And they're quite narrow, as you can see. This was the head camera I had. And they drop down to the blackness. You don't know how far they go down. And when you're, but to be honest, it's not the scary part. The, that's the safe part. You're, you're, you know, you're, you feel like that's under control. You know that you're facing it. You prepare for it. Your head is around it. And psychology was a big part of the prep. The one part I forgot to mention. Um, the psychology prep would have covered off all this. You just would have been prepared for, for, for fear and to handle fear. And when you're scared of heights, that's not ideal. But, um, but by, by the time I got this far, I, I think I've gotten over my fear of heights. But um, it was the, the, the crevasses were all the way through, and they weren't the scary part. I suppose the scary part is, is the hanging ice on either side when you go through. It gets quite narrow, and you have mountains on either side. You have Everest on the left, and you have Nupsi on your right. Um, and, uh, and lots of straight ahead, but the, the ice can come off the other mountain, so that's that's where, where it gets daunting. So you're just worried about um, ice falling uh, from the mountains, or you're moving through towers of, of ice, maybe twice or three times the, the ceiling height here. Blocks of ice that might have fallen off that are just resting there, and you're kind of weaving in and out through them. And the first time I moved through the ice fall up to Camp 1, it was probably about six hours, so you're kind of in that zone for maybe, probably even eight hours. Probably six hours where you feel fairly, fairly um, vulnerable, but you try not to think about it. That's the key. To it. So before we ever got to make the summit push, think about Everest is you you have to do a number of rotations. So for Everest, we did uh, Labuja, and I think it was three other rotations. One was a really short one, and uh, three other rotations. And after that, we were ready. The final thing before we could enter the mountain was the puja, and that was a really special ceremony again. It lasted about two hours. And as offerings, you give offerings of rice, but they also give offerings of beer and whiskey, which you, you're obliged to have a little tipple of as well. Um, so it's a great ceremony. It feels like a little bit of a festival, along with it being quite a spiritual at the moment. So I'll flip through the other slides just to give a feel. I'll, uh, this was, um, I'm kind of onto the summer push because I'm conscious of time. So on the summer push, this was just another one of those moments. And this was looking out from Camp 3, um, down across the valley. This was the Lhotse face coming up here, Lhotse would have been up along this way. This was the Lhotse face when you come to Camp 3. Camp 3 is on a slope, so it's quite steep. But um, you just have enough space to kind of get your tents, and this is where the crampons just outside. And we're on the summit push, and we just looked outside, and we kind of said, this is worth it, you know, these kind of moments, you know, I'll, I'll never see them again. Well, hopefully I'll see them again for a minute. But, 
but at the time you're, you're saying it's very special and it's very significant and I'll never forget it, whatever I've never seen it again, but I'll never forget these moments where you look out across the valley and you feel like you're just in a place that you dreamt about for so long. So that was really, really special for me on Camp 3 after, so on the way up, when we were fully acclimatized, we went, the, the weather window on the way up, um, we were resting in, in Namche and Rory was just coming down for his rest time and we met each other on a helipad. He was hopping off to get some rest time, we were heading back up. And we got back up to base camp um, that day, we'll call it a Monday. On Tuesday I felt really lazy because we had just been eating and now I'm slow to recover and the Tuesday went for really hard, burn up, uh, up uh, I'm right out the mountains on today, Kalapatar. Went for a good burn up Kalapatar and it was about six hours, I came back and my legs were like jelly and the Sherpas came in and I was like, and they said we're having a meeting at five, this was at four o'clock, I said oh, I'm going to summer for it. I had no time to prepare myself. I felt tired and uh, I just wasn't in the zone for it. And these are just the psychological battles you go through. And sure enough, at 5 o'clock, they said the weather window is opening up. The Gurkhas have left last night. They're going to fix ropes. They're taking over the rope fix.